Join us at the Prump Nugget Hotel and Casino with the number one gaming experience and entertainment. The Prump Nugget has the number one dining experience at Stockman Steakhouse, Golden Harvest Cafe, and the Gold Miners Buffet. Come get your game on at the Prump Nugget Hotel and Casino. At Healthcare Partners Medical Group, our mission is to provide the highest quality of health care to each and every patient. With five locations in Pahrump, we are local doctors you know and trust. We want to thank you for choosing us. Quality care starts here. This portion of the news is brought to you by Affiliated Chiropractic and Affiliated Physical Therapy. Come in for your free consultation. Call 775-727-8900. Our goal is to create the individual treatment plan that will restore your health and end pain. All right, welcome back, and let's join Deanna O'Donnell with your entertainment this week. On Sunday, singer 37-year-old Mindy McCready was found dead on the front porch of her Arkansas home of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. McCready leaves behind two sons, 6-year-old Xander and 10-month-old Zane. Just a month earlier, police had paid another visit to the house in Herber Springs. On that day, they found the infant's father, record producer David Wilson, dead on the porch. He, too, had apparently taken his own life, and he, too, had used a gun. McCready burst onto the music scene in 1996 with her debut album, 10,000 Angels. It sold more than 2 million copies. Her chart-topping hit, Guys Do It All the Time, followed that same year. In all, she put 14 songs and six of her albums on the Billboard country charts. She struggled with addiction and mental illness, often publicly. Letters from John Lennon's killer detailing his obsession with the novel The Catcher in the Rye to a police officer who arrested him went on sale Monday through a Los Angeles auction house. The four missives from Mark David Chapman to Officer Stephen Spiro are on sale through Moments in Time, which specializes in historical documents and rare autographs at a fixed price of $75,000. The auction house is selling the letters on behalf of Spiro, who arrested Chapman on December 8th of 1980, shortly after he shot Lennon outside the Dakota, the, Be the ex-Beatles Manhattan apartment building. The letters are typed and signed by Chapman. They were written over several months in 1983 after he pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 20 years to life in prison. The officer Spiro has decided to sell them in part to pay off hefty medical bills from cancer and other illnesses. In his new memoir, the twice-divorced 80-year-old Clive Davis reveals that he had sex with a man in the 1970s. Davis writes in the soundtrack of My Life that he hadn't repressed or confused these feelings during his marriages and that sex with a man had provided welcome relief. He also writes that he started dating a man from 1990 to 2004, which he says was a tough adjustment for his son Mitchell. He says after one trying year, he and his son worked things out. Davis is the father of three children and the chief creative officer of Sony Music Entertainment. He writes that he's been in a strong monogamous relationship with a man for the last seven years. More than 80 years after his creation, Mickey Mouse continues to surprise. The Disney archives have released a newly discovered sketch from 1938, Mickey's Toothache, part of an incomplete cartoon that was part of an effort to make Mickey a more complete character. In Mickey's Toothache, created in April of 1938, the artist has the newly adventurous Mickey experiencing something akin to a psychedelic nightmare. Mickey has traveled to the dentist and fallen under the influence of too much laughing gas. The overdose sends Mickey into a nightmarish world inhabited by living teeth, dental floss, a psychotic dentist chair, and a vengeful pair of dental pliers. The previously forgotten piece of artwork was discovered in the vault of the Disney archives, hiding out in a folder lost for more than 74 years. It was unearthed just a few months ago. Mickey's toothache is just one of the several unveilings being planned as part of this year's D23, Disney's Faniversary Celebration. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. That's your entertainment this week. A cash strap postal service announced Tuesday that it has inked a licensing deal with an Ohio based clothing company to produce a line of apparel dubbed rain, heat and snow. The attire aims to reach well beyond t-shirts and baseball caps to include wearable electronics like jackets with iPod controls built into the sleeve footwear jackets, coats and shirts. They stated that the Postal Service recognizes that their business model has to change and they have got to be more innovative, in, innovative with products that they bring to market. The clothing line may not have the post office logo on them, but there will be something recognizable that identifies the product with the Postal Service. Well, here's An Angela Miles with your first business brief. <music> 
This is the first business break for Wednesday, February the 20th. I'm Angela Miles. Prices are going down for your morning perk up. J.M. Smucker, a power player in the coffee roasting business, is cutting prices on Folgers and Dunkin' Donuts packaged coffee. The change is due to a continuing drip in Arabica futures, which have dropped more than 50% since May 2011. An iconic American brand is landing back in bankruptcy court. The RDA Holdings Company, which owns Reader's Digest, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy for the second time in three years. RDA Holdings claims to have reached a financing agreement and expects to emerge from bankruptcy in the next six months. Coming soon, a battle over movie trailers. The LA Times reports some film studios are being asked to pay as much as $100,000 to play just one movie trailer. That's the first business brief. I'm Angela Miles. All right, folks, well, your weather is going to be right after this, so keep it here. News 46 weather is brought to you by Healthcare Partners Medical Group with five locations in Pahrump, local doctors and professional staff providing total care from infancy to seniors. News 46 weather is also brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. For more information, you can visit their website at nevadadairycouncil.org. Welcome back. Today we have mostly cloudy skies, high 56 degrees. Winds coming out of the northwest at 10, gusts at 20, so kind of calming down from yesterday. Pressure staying steady at 29.67, UV index at 4 moderate. Humidity pretty high for the daytime actually, 42%, sunrise 625 a.m. And that record high was 79 degrees back in 1995. Tonight, clear skies, low of 30, winds are going to still come down coming out of the north northeast at 7, gusts at 16. Humidity is not going to go up very much, 47%. Sunset, 5.31 p.m. and the record low, 23 and 42. Looking at Friday, sunny skies. Our temperatures are pretty much going to stay the same, 55 for a high, low 30, which both of them are actually kind of under our seasonal average, which is about 64 for a high, about 45 for a low, so significantly under that. Winds coming out of the north at 7, gusts at 13. Humidity 25%, sunrise 6:24 a.m. and UV index is actually going to come up to five. Our seven-day forecast after Thursday 59 degrees there on Friday, 66 on Saturday, so a bit of a picking up in temperature. But something weird kind of happens Sunday; it goes down to 57 degrees and then back up to the 60s in, on Monday. Weather needs to make up its mind if it wants to be in the 50s or the 60s. All right, and then looking at our lows. Looks like mid to lower 30 degree temperatures there, 34 on Friday, 33 on Saturday. Maybe some clouds there on Saturday, mostly sunny for all those days. And as we head out of, as we head out of winter, we're going to see temperatures pick up, obviously, going into spring. So after February, expect some good weather. All right, folks, well, before we go ahead and leave, I'd like to say thank you to Eduardo, who is a very loyal viewer. I met him down at the thank Nugget, you. I believe it was Thursday night. He's very sweet, very sweet. So anyways. Um, all right. Well, that does it for this edition of News 46. I'm Glenn Evers. And I'm Monique Mitchell. And from all of us up here on the Hill at KPVM, we wish you a great night, and we hope to see you here tomorrow. Good night. Good night.